Time to meet Anthony and Angela Tringham, the couple growing heirloom tomatoes in Clevedon, southeast of Auckland, with a little help from a very special bug. So here we are standing in a meadow. It is hip high with wildflowers and wild grasses. The other thing to remember with it, with Anthony saying a meadow, this is a New Zealand meadow. A lot of people, when they think of meadow and that sort of thing, they think of these pretty flowers uh, from English meadows. You can plant all those and they do look beautiful, but they're not going to grow back next year because it's, they're not, they don't work here. One of the things we like to say is don't mow your lawns. And why is that? It's because what we're trying to do is to create an entire ecosystem outside our greenhouses. And what that means is, so we are standing here in a mixed herb lay. We've got wild carrot, coxfoot, plantain, red clover, white clover, suckling clover, pretty little white things, Yorkshire fog, and goodness knows what else. All these flowers, they nurture the good insects that we want to grow outside and then fly into our greenhouses. In the past, it was always, what was it considered a concrete outside? What was it, there was a name for it? We, we, when we went to university in 1984, we were told that you want to have nothing outside your greenhouse. There's a name for it? Scorched earth. Scorched earth, that's, yes. it. that's what I was trying to think of. So you, you go around any serious greenhouses, which is not ours, because we're on a farm, which is different, and they have concrete around them. But we've sometimes been to major greenhouses and there's this concrete everywhere and always there'll be a crack somewhere and a tomato plant will grow up because that's what they do. We've gone and we've seen them absolutely covered in white fly because they, there's nothing there to attack them. So what we're doing here is we're stopping that scorched earth and we're inviting every single native insect we can to come in and also the other thing was in the past people obviously they sprayed but even if they were using biocontrols which we use um, they were just reliant on just the biocontrols you've got whereas what we believe now um, is that there are so many native insects that we actually know nothing about and they're all here and they're all a barrier. So insects that we don't want coming into our greenhouse, they're coming here and they've got to fight this battle. Because they've got something else instead, a new yep. environment and yep. sacrificial plants they might be more interested in than the tomatoes that yep. are the only thing for miles. And so again, it's a whole of ecosystem approach. Where in the, in the past, we might have focused on just one or two things. Now we want as much diversity around our greenhouses as possible. Well, let's go have a look inside the greenhouses. Okay, let's go. Come on, Riley. Welcome, come on in. So this is our heirloom tomato greenhouse. As you can see, it's a bit chaotic. It's lovely and warm in here. It certainly is. It's a lot warmer. What, what temp does it normally get up to? We like to keep it around 25. It gets too hot in summer, so it can get to about 35. Which tomatoes don't like. Mm. Too hot, yeah. yeah. How many tomatoes would I be looking at here in the greenhouse at the moment? 4,000. We lose count of how many different varieties we have because they're all so chaotic and random. Primarily you are focused on some of the heirloom varieties. We certainly are, so come and have a look. It smells so gorgeous as well actually. This gorgeous tomato is a mamond. It is a French style, it is very crinkly, and very yeah. flavoursome and very red. Because it's just been picked. Our general thing as well with picking is we, we believe that the fruit gets its flavour from staying on the plant, not the vine, the plant. And so if you take it off when it's not quite ripe, you just lose that flavour. Why tomatoes? How did you get started? Why did you pick this, this particular crop? Uh, every good story starts with a disaster. So we, and this is we, I'm saying this, this is mainly Anthony, he, with his family, grew um, pre-packed cherry tomatoes for supermarkets. and. Even back then, Anthony basically never sprayed. So he used biocontrols way back in the very early days. And because of that, he was the one that found this new insect that he didn't like. And Anthony, being the nerd that he is, got thoroughly excited by it and contacted MAF and said, oh, oh, what is this, what is this? And they didn't know what it was. And so they searched around and they found out and it was the potato tomato psyllid. So. Basically, they shut us down. And, and so after that, we found the Cleveton Farmers Market. Helen Dorstein from the Cleveton Farmers Market came and said, why don't you grow tomatoes for us? And, and it's grown from there. Yeah. And then once we, once we started, 
People didn't want boring round red cherry tomatoes. They wanted heirloom tomatoes. They wanted big red beefsteak. Even, can I say, even before that, what we were amazed about, so it was, it was at a time where all the big companies were just dumping tomatoes, okay? And so we had our punnets that were selling at $4 each, which was a very high price. And what we couldn't believe that everyone that came in, they were buying four punnets or six punnets or eight punnets. And it was just like, wow. And it was only ages and ages later we, we found out that Helen had gone around everyone in Clevedon and said, basically, you've got to buy from these guys, you've got to support them, you've got to do this, we need to keep them. So it's her serious support that got us really excited about it. And um, our classic thing is uh, we'd come home after doing something like doing a market and we sit down, we have a glass of wine and we think, oh, what do we do, what do we do? And it was one time that we came and we sat down and we said, this is just rubbish, growing pre-packs. We've got to grow interesting things. So we ripped out half of a greenhouse. And we planted fabulous heirloom varieties instead and we've never looked back. Do you mind if I ask about the, the growing process just while we're standing here? I'm looking at the, the box down there at the middle. How do you kind of start? What we do is we grow in cocoa peat. So it's like a composty mix, which we mix with seaweed and lots of beneficial organisms, and then we plant the, tr the, we plant the tomato plants on top. The good thing about cocoa peat is that it holds water and it also holds lots of oxygen. So it is a really sweet thing to grow plants in. And is this kind of part of those agroecology principles? It certainly is. And so not only do we have lots of complicated stuff above ground, we're also doing lots of complicated stuff below ground. Uh, another thing we do is the cocoa peat we keep for three years. So the people you buy the cocoa peat off, they say you have to change it every year. But as far as we're concerned, in the cocoa peat, we've got such an amazing ecosystem in there that it's it's terrible to lose it. And so we want it back the next for the next season. The only thing that makes us stop and change it is at a point it just gets too many weeds and a bit too out of control. And so what we're trying to do is to create a complex environment around the roots that's full of life and, and full of life and bacteria and fungi and that's what keeps the roots healthy. What I'm holding here is a tobacco leaf and on the tobacco leaf are dozens of little insects which are on our team. These little guys are called Engitatus. They grow on tobacco and then we sp they also eat bad insects. So we grow Engitatus on tobacco they breed on this and then we spread them throughout the tomato house and they eat the bad insects. And this is quite new science. It's using something that's locally available to do a good job for us. Also, can you see what he did with the leaf? Yep. If it's if down at the back, they're not getting around, he'll pick leaves and just throw them around. And that just helps naturally spread the bugs around. Yep. So coming on through. You might ask the question, why doesn't everyone grow heirloom tomatoes? And the answer is they are total rubbish to grow and they only put out a fruit if it suits them. Take this variety here. This is vintage brandy wine. On this plant, it's been in here for months and it hasn't given me any tomatoes yet. And you can't really do anything about that, I suppose. No, it's, it's as infuriating as hell. Buy them? <laughs> the, the plant next to us, it's going to give us a couple of tomatoes and then nothing is going to happen on this plant for a couple of months. And then it'll give us three more plants. Three more, fruit. three more fruit. This tomato looks like it's going to grow really well, and this tomato looks like it's going to give us lots of fruit, but it's a liar. It didn't give us any fruit down here for a month. And what I do is I come in and I curse them and I sing to them, and I say, if you don't grow me some good fruit, you're all being pulled out. And so this one, is, she's going to put out three good trusses, and then if I'm not paying any attention, she'll chuck it in again. Just to, to spite you. Just to spite you. These guys keep me awake at night. If we're selling tomatoes and we go on menu at a restaurant, we can't not supply. But the tomatoes don't care about that. They just care about putting out a few of their fruit and then doing whatever. This, this sort of business only works if you can get the tomatoes picked and then delivered within a few days. So we couldn't sell to supermarkets. Who is your primary demographic? Obviously you guys have the farmer's market, but I understand you're also well established in the local restaurant scene and other that, foodies. I think that's our main thing is hospitality. The thing as well with heirloom tomatoes is they don't have a long shelf life. And as I've said, we like to pick quite right. So we deliver twice a week and it's all pre-ordered. So 
each chef basically orders what they want. Well, we do them in five kilo boxes and they just go out, they get them the next day. So it's really quick turnover. I see there's a couple of staff members around getting ready for your picking tomorrow. How many people do you guys employ and, and what's your season like generally? Ultimately, we, we employ up to 20 people. We keep four over winter now. We used to, it used to be two, we now keep four over winter. Um, yeah, so we're moving up there now. We're at probably at nine just now, but our season is just kicking off. And as always, when our season starts, we hope that people still want to buy our tomatoes. So if anyone's listening on Radio Land, please come to the Cleveland Farmers Market or go to your local restaurant and ask for heirloom tomatoes. Do you have a favourite type of tomato? This is interesting. If I said... Yours is marigold. Mine is marigold? Mine's vintage brandy wine. If I said my favourite tomato is the worst... And two of them are arseholes. No, no. If I said my favourite tomato is the hardest one to grow and the most fickle, obviously um, I like difficult people, don't I? Yeah, you don't. And that's why why I've married Angela. So so obviously, obviously I'm a little bit contrary, aren't I? We like challenges. We wouldn't do this if we wanted something easy. That was Anthony and Angela Tringham I was speaking to from Curious Croppers in Clevedon. You can find the couple every Sunday at the local farmer's market. We also have a Curious Croppers tea towel to give away if you can tell us the name of the bug the couple has been using to help reduce pests. If you missed this, you can listen again by looking for Country Life on any podcast listening app. Email your answers to country.rnz.co.nz to go into the draw.